Happy New Year. Welcome to my shop build out. In this video, we're going to build lighting. We're going to build heat and maybe a couple of creature comforts for the shop. Join me. So, as you can tell right away, we don't really have any light in this shop. Although we technically have power, and I have a work light, camera light thing. But this is not the right way to do this. So, from the last video, I want to show you guys the progress that has been made in this shop. This shop is now completely insulated. I have OSB laid out across the environment. Ignore that light, it's not really plugged in. And uh, the problem is I don't have any lights up here. And this light, which I could mount up there, runs on 110. It's bright enough, but it consumes about 50 watts of power. And I really don't want to run 110 volt equipment in here if I don't have to. So, first things first, let's build the light. Uh, this is an aluminum element that uh, I think it was part of a fixture that held garden equipment. I'm not sure what it was. The point being is, it was in my junk pile, and all it is is a piece of aluminum with three conveniently spaced holes, which I'm going to need. What I did was I bought some 12 volt warm white uh, LED strips. This is supposed to be the waterproof kind but you can cut them and uh, solder them up. I'm going to see if I can get four strips on each side of these screws. Or, or I should say I'm going to see if I can get four strips onto this. We'll see. Um, household style switch. This is only going to switch a couple of amps anyway, if that, and uh, 3D printed bracket because, well, everything around here has a dose of 3D printing. And uh, three long, half rusty, half recycled uh, screws that I dug out of my screw bin. A bunch of uh, 3D printed cable clamps that are going to be used to actually fasten the wire to the wall. Uh, I'm running external wiring here and uh, it's basically all it is is uh, speaker wire. Uh, I think that was the cheapest way to actually get some uh, good length uh, wire with a decent gauge uh, that didn't break the bank. So let's start. Time to find the nearest piece to cut, which seems to be right there. This is very convenient because you can cut it every, literally every couple of inches. Literally every two inches on the dot. I picked up the waterproof version because it has this rubber on top that supposedly makes this waterproof but uh, I'm hoping it also acts as a disbursement lens versus the dry LEDs just sitting there we'll see I haven't lit these up yet so I guess uh, not like I can return this anyway So the gluing is done, let me do the soldering offline and uh, let's test it out. So after a few minutes of soldering, this is what I've done. Uh, these are all 
soldered end to end. So it's just a bunch of power connections. This is the main wire. I put a cable strain relief that will run this way. Once this gets screwed to the ceiling, this will have another plastic strain relief like that right next to it. This cable shouldn't go anywhere. And the power is being fed from this end. Uh, the wire with the black stripe is the ground. The one that doesn't have any stripes is the power. And there we go. One LED strip. Time to mount it. Looks like these inch and a half drywall screws are more than enough to anchor this. Time to run the wire. to join the wires. Install the switch. I already ran this wire through the wall when I put this wall together. Uh, this panel is actually removable so I can actually remove it and replace the wire or whatever if I ever need to do that. This is a 3D printed frame. It has four holes on it for four screws and a couple of holes built in for the actual uh, regular household switch here. Okay, and a quick XT60 connector here. Uh, what we have in this area of the battery is uh, we have a fuse block here. Um, they're actual fuses. In retrospect, I should have probably gone for some breakers, but regardless, um, there's two lights outside lights and interior lights. These are the interior lights and these will be plugged into the top one and now that should be hot. Let's see if it works. Again it's only 5 watt, uh, 5 amps. Uh, the lighting is only 5 amps. Hey, look at that. Let's turn off the other light. Oh, it 
it's still 45 degrees in here, so I put on my hat. But, uh, yeah, I'm happy with the light. The biggest thing that I'd like to get sorted out here, and there was a bit of a clue down there, is where there's a 20 amp fuse for it, is something called a blower. Uh, the reason I called it a blower is because, well, that's the sticker that came with it and that, that resembled that the most. So, without further ado, I'll show you the next part. Everybody seems to be buying these. I found a great deal on this uh, during the summer because I was planning on doing, well, this past summer, because I was uh, planning on doing this shed and I found it at a flea market. Uh, actually, it wasn't a flea market, it was. Um, it was one of these automotive trade markets. Anyway, somebody had bought it, didn't want it, and the uh, Amazon window was closed or whatever. The guy ended up selling it to me for 30 bucks. Does it work? I have no idea. Uh, but it, it doesn't smell like fuel. Uh, the tank has never been pierced, and uh, all the parts seem to be there. So there it is. This is a five kilowatt diesel heater of course made in the people's republic of uh, you know where mine has this flavor controller which I'm not sure if that's good or bad it has a remote as well which, if the remote actually works, might actually come in handy because a person can, I can literally look outside of my um, office window in the morning and just click on this and actually have some heat turned on before I get into the shop. And this, so this is also part of the off-gridness of the plan. Uh, the electric for this, as we're watching now, and most of the build here was all solar so uh, there's the master plate a mess of wires tube pump that was the filter cardboard I think that's the exhaust uh, I know what this is this is actually an option this is for um, marine applications or automotive applications. You drill a hole in your diesel tank and you can actually mount this permanently. It's not for this thing. But I, if, if it wasn't for the um, hole in the middle, I could probably just use that to uh, mount this tank. Because you actually have to pierce this tank to mount it. I'm not even sure I'm going to use that tank yet. Uh, vents, air intake with uh, silencer slash large object filter. It's not really a fine filter. Uh, muffler, zip ties, jubilee clamps, a mess of uh, wires, brackets so on and so forth. Um, I think I left the instruction manual upstairs as I was uh, actually perusing through it and this uh, uh, metal insulated uh, and as well as the tea. This is for distributing the air. I'm probably not going to use most of these parts like these. And this. Obviously I'm going to use the tubing and the wiring. Thing that gets me going first is where do I mount this and how do I mount it? So, this is the part that we're going to solve together in this uh, video as well. create some feet for this what I'm going to use is some of this um, tubing uh, it's thin wall 
I'm going to cut it in the proper lengths and uh, I'm going to take this all thread rod and I'm going to cut this into uh, four separate chunks as well and nut and bolt um, this hole as an assembly onto the board here. So before I do that, I only pre-drilled one of them, this one over here, and I have to widen the holes of these just a hair. Uh, Alright, these are the four tubes, they're all the same size, and uh, I'm going to take this plate off, I marked where this plate should be placed over here, and I'm going to turn it around and These are cut off uh, off camera, so let's start putting this thing together. I mounted this piece to the actual board that is holding up the heater and uh, now we need to create some um, uh, basically I need to create a spot where the exhaust can go through without burning this wood so I have to drill a big hole and I'm going to use this uh, aluminum as a very thin membrane that can uh, prevent the wind from coming back in but at the same time allow the exhaust to go out. Uh, I've already drilled the intake hole which is what this is for so I can put an intake filter here like so. I'm going to figure out how I'm going to mount this and um, yeah, and this is the exhaust. The exhaust is gonna hook in there. Obviously, this is gonna get tightened down, and so is this and that. But uh, this exhaust has to come out through this uh, metal. Actually, well, I know you can't see it from there, but it's actually pretty centered here. Um, the hole here is pretty precise. This one is a little loose, but I can tighten that up with a little bit of tape. And uh, now it's just to screw this on. And I think I should be able to actually mount this to the window now. It's time to wrap it up. Uh, I didn't get away with uh, not 3D printing something. I made this uh, box here. It's just going to hold all the mess of wires instead of cutting them and resoldering them and all that. I decided to just 3D print the box. 
here's that amount of LCD and this box is really going to go right here there's a big hole here that goes with this that hole is designed to take the plug that goes to the fuel pump I already went ahead and mounted the tank and the pump is over here on the side at the angle that it's supposed to be at the angle of the jangle and uh, let's uh, plug it in That's plugged in the XT60 connector for power, which the power outlet is right there, dedicated for it. Um, here's the main D sub connector for the actual heater, so that goes there. And uh, what I did on here, I don't know if you can see it, uh, I designed this uh, box with a hole in it. And a slot because this LCD the wire comes on the side so what it does is you put the uh, basically you put the wire in you tuck it under you uh, you screw in this bracket and then you snap everything together and it kind of holds it neat and uh, this is the triangular plug for the device here Let's see, and I should be able to just stuff all these wires in there. And okay. there you go. Uh, I went ahead and pre drilled a bunch of these uh, small holes so the screws can stay in there. I also dug up some felt lining to put against the window. I will put that in once I know everything is working. Hopefully it is working. Uh, the fuel line, uh, there's a hole here on this other board that comes through the bottom and snakes up on the cool side of the heater. And uh, I think that's really all there is to it. Let's uh, plug this in. It does power on. Not sure how much water it just consumes. Just sitting there on standby. Let's see. Right now I'm consuming about 41 watts and with this, yeah about 41 watts, it's, it's, it's negligible, it's way less than a watt is what the LCD takes the power on, that means it can stay plugged in all the time. I should be able to actually move this in if I want to. Uh, but uh, I think I'm just going to make a bench out of this at some point. So, without going too much overboard, let's tuck these wires back a little bit. Um, let's get some fuel into this and see if we can fire it up. After two or three restarts, it primed itself, and it's it's working. Not bad for thirty bucks. It's already taking the edge off of uh, the coal that's in here. This is how I'm gonna refill this. I have a. Uh, pump here that will well as you can
you can see this is working beautifully in about 40 minutes or so this whole room is uh, more than comfortable enough to um, work in and that's on low heat uh, what can I say thanks for watching and subscribing and I hope you'll be back bye